Hello everybody, welcome to Sermon on the Go. Today my topic is how to pray effectively. There are a company of people on earth that before they speak, God answers them. There is a dimension of Christianity where you succeed without any form of struggle. What is prayer? Prayer is communicating with God and getting feedback from Him on the basis of His Word and our relationship with Him. God is not in the business of studying your prayer. His duty is to answer your prayers. He said, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. God is interested in your success and welfare, whereas Satan is interested in your failure and defeat. Satan will make you offend God by doing things that will hinder your prayers. But the good news is, we are not ignorant of his devices and the tricks of the devil. In order to have an effective prayer in your walk with God, there are things you need to eliminate from your life. The first is offense. What is offense? Offense is a feeling of resentment brought about by a perceived insult to or disregard for oneself. It is a feeling of anger, bitterness and resentment against God, born out of your faulty notion that God has not been fair to you. It is simply saying in your heart with your mouth and your actions that I merit and deserve something better than what I am going through. Offense is judging God unfaithful of his promises in the Holy Scriptures. It is being angry with God that you have been unfairly treated by him in spite of of all your good works. There are a category of people in the world that God can never help. Some of them are those who think that God is their problem. But how can the one who can help you be your problem? His plans for humanity, his plans for you are good. So it can never be God who is causing your problems or the problems in the world. Friends, the moment you take offense against God, it means your prayers can never be answered by God. Such persons can never be helped by God anymore. He is a faithful God. There is no mistake in Him. Don't have a negative perspective about God. He is not a wicked God. His character is in Numbers 23, 19. He is not a man that he should lie. There are two key people in the New Testament who had problems, but each of them saw God from a different perspective. These two are leading apostles. The first is John the Baptist. And second is the Apostle Paul. John the Baptist is like many of us in churches. John was the one who declared that Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But when he was put into prison in Matthew 11, John the Baptist asked a very silly question. He said, is Jesus the one to come? This implied that John was very angry with Jesus. 
If you are truly the son of God, why am I here? In response, Jesus sent a message and said to John, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news brought to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. This means that John the Baptist was offended and eventually was beheaded. The second person is the Apostle Paul. Paul had a similar problem in the Acts of the Apostles, but he did something different. Paul did not do what John did. Paul knew that God is ever faithful, so he turned his energy to praise God and pray. After they have given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison, this is Paul and Silas, and ordered the jailers to keep them secure. Following the instructions, they put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and every chain were loose. Friends, when Paul and Silas were thrown into prison, they didn't complain. They turned their energy to praise God and pray. And as a result of that, they were loose out of their chains and they were set free. The problem with humanity is that we complain about all our struggles and our challenges and our problems and we blame them on God. When in crisis and challenges, these are the things people say, but God, I have been serving you faithfully. I have been giving offerings to support the ministry of the church. Why am I not married? Why have I lost my job? Why are all these things happening to me? These negative questions are the reasons our prayers are not answered. Life itself is a gift. Therefore, to complain about life and protest against God is to regret it in the end. When you praise and thank God, no matter your present circumstances and condition, you become a beneficiary to his goodness and blessings. Because all things work together for good for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Don't let the devil use the trap of offense to make you react negatively against God and his goodness in your life. All Satan is after is to make your prayers not to be answered by God. In order to have an effective prayer, the second thing to eliminate from your life is unforgiveness. Whenever you stand praying, Forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. Unforgiveness is a barrier to effective prayers. God's forgiveness to you is directly proportional to the forgiveness you show to those who have offended you. Even if we fight with each other, we argue with each other, we have squabbles amongst ourselves, we have to learn to forgive, especially when those who have offended us come back to us seeking for our forgiveness.
Readiness to forgive is a sign of Christian maturity. If you are not ready to forgive, then your prayers will never be answered. If you are a young woman and you were disappointed by a young man instead of marrying you, forgive him. Forgive your parents who refused to train you in school and show you love and refused to train you in the right way. Still forgive them and show them love. Your father left your house and left your mother when you were young. Learn to forgive him. You may be asking yourself, Reverend, how do I go about forgiving people who have offended me? Because forgiveness is not simple. It is very challenging to forgive. In order to walk in forgiveness, we need to crucify our flesh and depend on the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will enable us to die daily to our flesh. The Holy Spirit will enable us to die to our emotions and become alive to the biblical realities of God kind of love. The Holy Spirit takes our hearts of stone and plays in us a living conscience. And finally, know and understand the implication of unforgiveness. In Matthew chapter 18, verses 32 to 35, a young man was forgiven by his master, but he refused to forgive his colleague and he was handed over to the tormentors to be tormented. Sometimes we don't have to pray. We just have to work on ourselves and the issues we have with others. There are some people who live in the same house with their spouses, but they bear grudges against each other. There are some people who say, I will never forgive this person or that person. This is the reason why the heavens have been closed for a lot of people when they pray. Friends, in order to have an effective prayer life, don't be offended against God and remove offenses from other people from you and learn to forgive. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to learn how to forgive. In order to have an effective prayer life, you need to come to the place of forgiveness and say in your heart, God, I forgive those who have offended me and wronged me. Therefore, search your heart and look for those you have tied up in your heart and release them by forgiving them and let them go and the heavens will open for you whenever you pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your message today. And we thank you for teaching us about how to have an effective prayer. And so we pray that by your spirit, you will strengthen us to help us to have an effective prayer by removing offenses from our lives and learning to forgive those who have wronged us and offended us. We pray that you inspire us by your spirit to learn to live in peace and harmony with all. To your praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I am now on TikTok. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok. Follow me on YouTube and share this message. I shall see you on Thursday. Shalom. Peace. <laughs>